Our emotional well-being must be a prioritized aspect of our overall health. We are becoming increasingly aware that when we address mental and emotional wellness, we see an increase in our physical health as well. I want to tell you about what happens in the body when we come up against things that influence mental well-being. In order to do that, I've come up with something I call the emotional feedback loop. It's a cycle that illustrates how the body reacts emotionally to sensory input. So let's break it down, starting with sensory input. Sensory input is basically when we perceive anything through our five senses, smell, taste, touch, sight, and sound. When you experience sensory input, your brain sets out to comprehend it, to give it meaning, and to form thoughts about it. Now, if this sensory input is perceived as unpleasant or worse, stressful or frightening, the thoughts created by that perception set off a cascade of neurotransmitters, which immediately activate stress hormones in our body. Now, this would be normal, even a healthy response for a real acute threat. But if these thoughts or perceived stressful conditions go on for long periods of time, something called the HPA axis becomes involved. HPA stands for hypothalamic pituitary adrenal. These three organs start talking to each other, and in some cases, revving the engine of our sympathetic nervous system. This creates a chemical cocktail consistent with stress. And once we're biochemically locked in, we tend to dwell on the same stressful thoughts, almost unconsciously, and the whole loop continues. Now, after time, this can really take a toll on us. Cortisol, one of the hormones released as part of the HPA axis, can really create some difficulties if too much of it is released for too long. I'm going to list some difficulties that can come from this. Now, you may not experience all of these, but pay attention to which of these difficulties impacts your life the most. Fatigue, irritability, head tension, intestinal and digestive upset, weight gain, changes in blood sugar and blood pressure, low libido or changes in menstrual cycle, difficulty recovering from exercise, poor sleep, poor concentration. Now, all of these come from an excess of cortisol production. And none of these is something you wanna deal with from day to day. So finding ways to take control of that emotional feedback loop is critical. Now, I'm gonna say something that you'll want to remember. What begins in the brain does not stay in the brain. We are not compartmentalized beings. Our neurochemistry does not stay neatly contained in our brains. Nothing in our body happens in a vacuum. Our minds and our bodies are a whole, and distress in one will lead to distress in the other. Moods and emotions that are suppressed in the mind will always be expressed in the body. There is overwhelming scientific evidence supporting the idea that your emotion and mood directly affect your physical well-being. There is possibly no better or more obvious way to see this link than with the connection between emotion and physical discomfort. How many times have we felt a negative emotion and within minutes, hours, or days experience a corresponding reaction in our body, specifically discomfort? My experience as a nurse practitioner sealed my belief in this link when I noticed an incredibly sharp increase in people asking for acute care while experiencing uncontrolled discomfort during the holidays. Well, this is when people are more likely to be stressed about money, feeling lonely, or experiencing loss. All right, we've learned a lot over the past few days about a concept called epigenetics. For a long time, we believed that the hereditary transmission of genetic information was set. But epigenetic research is now showing us otherwise. For example, if your mother was a constant worrier, it's possible that your genes are primed for worrying as well. But on the flip side, by taking control of your own feedback loop and breaking the pattern of worry, 
you could potentially change how that gene is expressed in your future children. The idea that the choices you make today can positively impact your children's experiences is simply beautiful. Sometimes it's easy to believe that we're helpless when it comes to our emotions, that they just happen to us and we have no way of changing the outcome. But understanding the feedback loop we just discussed and having a grasp on what's really happening in your mind and body enables you to see that there are in fact points along this loop where intervention is possible. So we may have more control than we realize on our journey to wellness, which is incredibly empowering. I'm going to give you two simple ways to put the brakes on this cycle. The first way to put the brakes on the emotional feedback loop is with supplementation. By regularly taking nutritional supplements, you can alter your biochemistry and set the stage, so to speak, for a healthier gut and brain environment. A healthy gut and a healthy brain go hand in hand. And when you have both, it enables you to be way ahead of the curve when stressful situations arise. If you're not sure where to start with supplementation, you can start with my absolute favorite, the Lifelong Vitality Pack. The second way to interrupt the cycle is to simply smell something. Just as a smell can start the cycle, you can use aroma to interrupt it and redirect your thoughts. You can even train your brain to associate a particular scent with an uplifting thought and use that association to intervene. Let's all try this together. Okay, grab an oil you love. I know you have one right next to you and put a drop in your palms. I like to use adaptive or balance. So you're gonna cup your hands over your nose, close your eyes and breathe in while thinking about things that bring you joy. Isn't that lovely? There is an amazing relationship between our sense of smell and our brain. Did you know that our sense of smell is 1,000 times more powerful than the other four senses? Smells can bypass that way station in the brain that usually acts as a gatekeeper deciding what to do with sensory input. Smells go straight to our limbic system. This means that smells and aromas impact us so quickly we don't have time to think about it. This is where some of the most powerful benefits of essential oils come from, through their aromas and the way they can influence our mental well-being. We can use them to stop our own emotional feedback loop in its tracks and even make a difference in the lives of our children. This is why I'm so grateful for the natural solutions I've learned in doTERRA. I would encourage you to play around with the products doTERRA has to offer from essential oils to supplementation to better assist you on your journey to mental wellness.